Hello, my name is Miss Max and today I'm going to be teaching you. Uh, today we are going to be learning how to draw and paint and a little bit about mallards, which are a type of duck. Um, we are specifically going to be working on a male mallard because they have really fun bright colors um, where the female mallards are usually more dark. Uh, they kind of have brownish colors to camouflage themselves and to help keep their young safe and everything like that. So. A little bit about mallards is they live in wetlands, marshes, lakes, and ponds. So you'll find a lot of them in Michigan. Um, they eat things like aquatic plants, insects, uh, small fish, crustaceans. They even eat amphibians, which if you don't know what an amphibian is, that is something like a frog. Um, they are really social. When you see a group of them together, it can be called a raft or a paddling. So that's pretty cool. A lot of animals have like, when they're in a herd, they have like a specific name. Um, so these ones can be called a raft or a paddling, which is cool. Um, a little fun fact, the largest mallard ever recorded had a wingspan of 98 centimeters and weighed 3.5 pounds. Sorry. Um, Mallard ducks play a really important role in the wetland ecosystem. They disperse seeds and they control the insect population. So they are very, very important to our environment. So here is the example of what we are going to be working on today. Now, if you can't tell, um, I do have some mistakes here and there. And that is just to show you that mistakes happen it's okay. It doesn't ruin your whole painting and we can work with them. So if yours has a few tiny mistakes like this, that is a okay. Just keep working and know that even the best artists in the world make mistakes sometimes. So now we will get set up for our drawing. First you'll need your piece of paper, obviously, and then you'll need some crayons. I mostly have black and yellow. You'll obviously need your paint brushes and a palette for paint. And this is watercolor. So with watercolor, you'll need water. All right, so first we're gonna start with sketching out our drawing first, and we're gonna be doing that with black crayon. So I will show you how we make the first part of the painting, I'm or the picture, I'm gonna do it first, and then you guys can follow along because it's basically going to be almost a full circle, but there are gonna be a few spots that we kind of leave blank. So I'll show you first, and then you can follow along, okay? So this is the middle of the paper right here. We don't want it exactly, exactly in the middle, so we're gonna move over a little bit to over here. And I'll show you, we are going to start with a little circle. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna leave a little space right here. And I'm gonna go a little bit under and then leave that space open as well. So it's gonna be almost a full circle, except you're leaving a space here and you're leaving a bigger space here. Sorry, you can see my cat's paws reaching over here. Um, if you guys need more time that I'm giving, uh, feel free to pause the video and keep going. I'm going to move ahead though. So the next thing we are going to do is so this is going to be his head shape. We are going to make the beak of our mallard. So to do that, we're gonna go to this little open shape here. We're gonna kind of do a line slightly curving inward. It's not gonna be a straight line. We're gonna kind of curve it. After we do that, we are going to make a triangle connecting those two points. And that will be his beak. All right, next thing we're going to do is right inside of his head, we're going to do a little kind of oval shape for his eyeball. And if you want, you can do another smaller shape inside and this will give it kind of like a shine to his eye. So we'll draw all of this in black and leave that inner circle white. All right, so now that we have done our head, the next thing we're going to do is the neck. So this is gonna be a little different, but we are going to do a long oval shape, just like this. All right, and that will be his neck. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on his body. And the body is gonna be 
kind of an awkward shape, but what we're going to do is we're going to start from over here and we're going to go not straight, we're going to kind of curve and go downwards. And it's almost kind of like an egg shape, like an awkward egg shape. So after we do that, we're going to go from this side of our neck and we're going to swing down and meet it up to this point here. Mine's not perfect. If yours isn't perfect, that is A-OK. -okay. We're not looking for perfection, we're looking for effort. So I'm going to just redraw my lines really quick. Just because I like mine a little bit thicker. All right. Now, once we've done our body, what we are going to do is give them a little wing. So we'll do kind of a rainbow shape there. And once you've done that, you are going to kind of make a long triangle shape connecting on each side. Just like that. So that's going to be his wing. If you'd like to add some detail in it, I like to do a few lines like this just to show his wing has some detail in it. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is we are going to make the water. So to do that, we are going to use a squiggly line right by his belly. So I kind of do it just underneath where this bottom part of the wing goes. And we'll do one on that side too. So that's gonna be his water. So along with our duck, we are going to be drawing some cattails, which are usually found near um, marshes and wetlands where our mallard would be. So these are also found in Michigan. Um, they're a little plant. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one line here, another here, and another here. So we're going to do three cattails. On the top of those lines, we are going to do long oval shapes on each one. This one's going to go off the paper a little bit, but that's okay. So those are our cattails, and how I'm going to kind of decorate it a little bit is adding some long pieces of grass on each side. All right, in our water, feel free to add some waves. And that is our beginning drawing for our duck for our mallard. <laughs> so now we are going to start painting. Okay, now that we have our beautiful mallard drawing, all we have to do is add some color to it. So these are watercolors, which means they're activated by water. So if you have, you should have a little glass of water next to you to dip your paintbrush in. We're going to start with his head. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and if you want to get any excess water, if you think you have too much water on there, you can just wipe it right against the side of your thing. Don't flick it onto here because that can make a really big mess. Just wipe, wipe, okay? So I'm going to wipe a little bit and I'm going to grab this green color. What I like to do sometimes is grab a little kind of glob of water on the edge of my brush and just put it right into my paint. All right. And then we are going to start painting his head. Now, if you get really big pools of um, paint where they seem to, like something like, like that, where it's kind of pooling up, what we can do is quickly take our brush and spread it around. And while we're painting, we're going to be painting pretty lightly, kind of like we're petting a cat, okay? We're not gonna go super, super hard because if you go really, really hard with your paintbrush, you could rip your paper. So we're gonna go lightly and we are going to paint all around. Be mindful of the edge here and try not to paint over the edge. If you do, it's not a big deal, so don't worry. It's not gonna ruin your painting. Like I said, I made a few mistakes myself and that's a-okay. So there's my first layer of green. I like to do a second layer because 
Um, mallards heads are very, very vibrant. And so let's do a second layer. And I'm not using way too much water. I'm using just enough to get that pigment onto my paper. If you do think you're using too much water at any point, um, give it a second to dry and then we can come back and fix it a bit later. But again, if you have big pools like this, do your best to just spread it out so you don't rip a hole in your paper. All right, so there is our green mallard head. Being careful of our edges and painting carefully. All right, so the next part we will do is his beak. I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush and dip into my orange. Now being mindful of our edges again, we are going to slowly paint in his beak. And if you see me wiping my paper like this, um, if I do get a little bit outside of the lines and I catch it right away, I'm able to wipe it with my finger and it comes right off. But if it dries, and this does dry very, very quick, then it won't come off, but that is a-okay. Like I said, mistakes happen and we learn how to work with them. All right, so now that we have our green, see I even right here, some of the green's coming over here. And that's okay, that happens, it's part of life. So the next thing we will do is, I don't know if this is really the most important part of it, but I do like to, just for my own brain, take a little bit of white and put it on his neck. See, it doesn't really change much, but I am able to kind of erase those two little marks that I made in my white now they're all gone. All right, so next thing we will do is I'm going to take a kind of smaller brush and I'm going to dip it into my black and I'm going to paint the eyeball. So we're gonna paint all around. Remember to leave that center circle white and I like his eye to be a little dark so I will after my first layer go in with a little bit more and here's a hint if you want your watercolors to be a bit more pigmented which means if you want them to be more bright more vibrant you use less water if you want them to be a little bit more um What's the word? Not as bright? <laughs> you would use more water. So I'm going in and I'm just giving him his little black eyeball. And if you see that I left this white in the middle, it kind of gives him a shine effect on his eyeball. All right. So that is the head done. Next, we'll move on to the body. So while the head is green and the neck is white, the body is brown. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to dip a little bit of water in my brown and mix it around a bit. And if I have too much water, I can just either rinse it off on the side here or over here. And what we're going to do is we are going to fill in everything but the wing with our brown. You see how I'm moving my pools of paint around? And we'll just paint, paint, paint. Again, we're doing very, very light strokes like we're petting a cat. And we're making sure we stay in the lines as best as we can. around. Oop, you see? I, I messed up right there, but that's okay. All right. So now we've got pretty much 
a decent color for our body. Like that. While we are already using the brown, we can go ahead and grab a little bit more. And we are going to paint our little ovals of our cattails brown as well. Sometimes a good thing to do if you get pools like this is to dry your paintbrush off a little and then start moving it around. So we'll do all three of them brown. Just like that. Okay, so now we can paint the wing of our duck. And we're gonna do that by using black but we're gonna add a decent amount of water to it because we want it more to be gray than just plain black. So, here we go. A lot of water on my brush, so it's not just a really, really crazy black. Because like I said, it makes it less pigmented if you use more water. Just like that. Now, if you wanna add a little bit of a darker color around the edge, feel free. That's what I like to do, but it's definitely not necessary. Just like that. All right. And next, we will paint our leaves that are attached to our cattails. So I am going to take a little bit of a smaller brush to do this. And I'm going to, actually, I'm going to dip into the green next to the green we used for our duck and make it a little bit of a different green. So then we're going to go over here and we're going to follow our shape and fill in with that color. Okay, so the next thing we are gonna do, we are gonna be using a lot of blue because the water's gonna be blue, also the sky's gonna be blue. So, let me pull out my handy dandy blues because this one's running out. Okay, so what we are going to do now is we're gonna go into our dark blue over here I like to put a lot of water in there because I don't like it so pigmented that I can't. Sometimes if it's really, really pigmented, you'll have problems like I did earlier where something like that happened and I couldn't go back and fix it after it was dry. So I like to add a decent amount of water in here just for my own sake. But All right, we are going to paint the water. So what I'm going to do is just light brush strokes across being mindful not to paint on top of my duck. I'm just going to slowly and lightly paint across the bottom. And there we go, there's our water. All right, and so for the sky, we are also going to do a blue. I 
think I'm gonna try this light blue over here. And it is very, very light, so we might have to do a layer or two. And we'll paint right across our top. Again, being mindful of where all of our shapes are already. Going around the duck head. And we're going to make sure we cover every inch of the paper so no white is showing because that's how we make a completed project. We make sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed, and we just make sure that our paper is fully painted. I might change to the darker one because this light is I think a little too light because it's hardly I'm hardly able to see it so I am gonna switch to my darker paint my darker blue on top Just a reminder that one thing you don't want to do right now is lift up your paper and show it to someone by holding it up because since this is watercolor it will drip and it could potentially make a big mistake on your paper so just for now until it's completely dry leave it flat on the table all right so we are finishing up our sky with these very light brush strokes. We're giving him a beautiful sky to look up at while he swims in his little pond or lake. And we're going around all of our shapes. I'm gonna keep reminding you guys that a mistake is not the end of the world and we can work with them. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've made a few just minor mistakes here and there as we go. And I just fix them or work with them as I make them. Okay, so here is our mallard. I hope you guys had fun. I love mallards. I think they are really, really cool. They are really important to our ecosystem. And now you know how to draw and paint one all for yourself. So, all right. So now we have finished our mallard, our little masterpiece. I hope that you can take away some fun facts about uh, our friend the mallard and hopefully you've learned some cool tips and tricks on how to paint with watercolor. I cannot wait to see you guys again. I hope you had fun and yeah, see you next time.